My dear viewers, I do have to apologise for this video, but we knew the day was going to come eventually. As over a year ago, Microsoft announced they were bringing Edge to Linux. A Linux build of their browser, which is now using the Chromium engine. And that day happened yesterday with the dev release. So there is a dev package and an RPM package of the Linux build. And since it's a dev build, I'm not going to be looking at performance stats. And realistically, I don't care about performance stats. What I care about is usability. And if you really want to annoy me in terms of usability, what you can do is put up a privacy policy. So we're off to a great start, Microsoft. Yep, gotta love a privacy policy, which I failed to agree to. And after that, it never appeared again. So I don't actually know what was there. But yeah, I thought the page wasn't rendering correctly, so I'll just close it, try again. But that could be an issue with the virtual machine, but I'm not here to criticise it on that. In fact, most likely it was an issue with the virtual machine. But as I say, we're looking at the general usage of the browser, not its performance. Which, of course, it was the performance that Microsoft used to boast about. Anyway, this is the default web page, and we can see this is kind of a Trojan horse into Microsoft's world, because we have links to Office 365, Outlook, the other Office components, Skype. I'm surprised they haven't put Teams instead of Skype. Okay, maybe they have further down. Um, no, that's actually the one application I can't see there, Teams. Which is funny, because you can get a Linux build of Teams. So we also have lots of advertising on this page. This is the default look at it. I've opened up a few pages, um, had a little look around, but yeah, this is the default presentation of it. The privacy statement. Oh yeah, gotta love it. Yeah, that's about cookies and... Oh, God, do you think I'm reading all this? Do, do you really think I'm going to read all of this Microsoft? In fact, that's not even rendered. What? Oh no, it's just really slow at rendering. Okay. So, what do you think the default search engine is? <laughs> is it Google? Is it DuckDuckGo? Or should we be binging it? Yeah, default search engine is Bing. So, this is a good way of Microsoft to bring a Linux user into their little ecosystem. The Bing search engine, Office 365. We do have a few options for customization of that new tab page. So page layout, we've got focused, which takes away the background, cramps things up a bit there, but we've still got a news feed down below. Informational, moves more to the news feed being on the page, and custom, so we've got a few different things here, your own image, custom themes, showing links, quick links. I suppose I shouldn't complain so much about this whole bringing people into Microsoft's ecosystem because the default new tab in Chrome and Chromium is about Google products. It's only when you change the default search engine does it become something different. Let's take a little look back in history to see how we've got to the point of Microsoft actually building a browser in a rival operating system. Back in the early days of Internet Explorer, well, Internet Explorer used the Trident engine in their browser, MSHTML, a proprietary engine, and they pre installed a version of Internet Explorer with their operating system. So it got to the point that Microsoft dominance was actually very high. We'll come on to it in a moment, but, but there was a push to use more open web standards rather than Microsoft's proprietary standards, which they were pushing. So we actually got to a point where Microsoft then had to comply with a different set of standards, and the Trident engine and Internet Explorer became quite a mess. So Microsoft moved on to getting rid of all the old code from Trident and built a new engine called Edge HTML, which they put in their new browser called Microsoft Edge. So fast forward a little bit more, and we have the stats of web browser usage, and I've just taken the stats here from W3Counter, but realistically this view is very similar to other stats websites, in that we have Internet Explorer and Edge falling quite rapidly. But yeah, if you had to take a little look back in history, so 2007 was the earliest I could go, Microsoft dominance was very high, and I know they got to a point of disbanding their development team around the time of Internet Explorer 6. It was only when the plucky Firefox came along did things start to change, and Microsoft realised they started losing. 
fast forward to now, and this is the situation we're in. So we have reached the point that Microsoft have decided it is no longer commercially viable to maintain their own browser, and dealing with all the associated security problems that may arise in later life due to bugs. So instead, they're utilizing a large component of the free open source build of Chromium, and that has the side effect of making it easier to port their browser to other operating systems, such as Linux. But the problem with Edge dropping to using Chromium means there's now less variety in terms of web browser rendering engines. You've got the choice of Mozilla or Chromium. And Mozilla is falling behind. Anyway, I said I wasn't necessarily going to look at performance. I mean, for all it's worth, oh, this fish bowl, we can get up to 2,000 fish and get pretty near 60 frames a second. But let's look at more at the usability. So I have the ability to mute and unmute a tab. Very similar to Chrome there. We have very similar features, but with perhaps more insulting or basic instructions. So manage your favorites now. Okay, like I never realized that was a place you could put favorites. Uh, if I made that stay the whole time, so show favorites bar uh, always and just went to another page. Right, it is there. And if we drag and drop something into it, well, that's similar behavior to I think all the other browsers. There was a pop-up about this collections feature, save anything on the web, use collections to save content for later, an image, text, full web page directly in the browser, next. So we've got all these instructions. So collections, more ideas from Pinterest. Well, of course there would be adverts in there as well. We can send feedback. There is also the option to log in. Once again, Chrome has this feature, but at least their feature works. <laughs> got, oh no, platform not supported, but this is all part of the dev build, so we can't necessarily criticize it at this point. In terms of extensions, well, that looks pretty similar to Chrome here for extensions. So get extensions for Microsoft Edge. I noticed the App Store, if you can call it that, is different here. Google called there's the Chrome Web Store, so I guess Microsoft are just saying Edge add-ons beta. <laughs> DuckDuckGo. Go on, give me DuckDuckGo. Compatible with your browser. Add extension. Yeah. Edge has turned off DuckDuckGo Privacy Essentials extension. Well, that's not very nice on terms of usability. Let's look at another extension that might be quite popular. So <laughs> I'm not going to read that out on YouTube. Anyway, I don't tend to use it in the way that most people would expect that I would use this thing. I, I literally untick all the filters and use my own. I use it as a cross-site blocking tool. So in terms of usability, there's nothing really much more to add over and above what I would have with Chrome. It certainly tries to push you into Microsoft's ecosystem, which I guess was the whole purpose of this browser, really. One thing I do like is that everything is under one window here. So if I do minimize Edge, then it minimizes everything. And same for going back. And that sounds a weird thing to say, but I do remember Edge minimizing and showing different tabs here. So that got a bit frustrating just to not be able to click one icon and show the whole browser. What I did notice in terms of download is that it's a bit larger than Chrome. So that is the stable build of Chrome, which I downloaded, well, you can see about a couple of minutes after Edge today. So Chrome is 71 meg and Edge is 88 meg. So what are Microsoft doing with their extra space? Good question. Love to view the source code, but you can't. This is a mixture of proprietary and open source. The open source element being the Chromium engine and the proprietary element being the encompassing web browser. So that was a bit of a look at Microsoft Edge in Linux. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later.